The Battle of Cressy took place in 1346 and was the first land battle in the Hundred Years' War. In 1328, the French King, Charles IV, died without an heir. Although the English King, Edward III, had legitimate claims to the French throne, Count Philip of Valois was chosen by French nobility as the new King of France. Initially, Edward accepted this decision, but disputes over the Flanders wool trade and French support for Scotland in their war against England changed Edward's mind. And when Philip confiscated the English possession of Gascony, the Hundred Years' War began. In 1346, Edward led 15,000 soldiers to Normandy and the English began raiding French towns on their way to Paris. But when a large French army was dispatched, Edward headed north, but the two sides would meet just outside the village of Cressy. The English army had about 10,000 soldiers, half of which were archers armed with longbows, but also consisting of knights, dismounted men at arms, pikemen and some very early forms of cannon. The English soldiers were split into three divisions. Each division had men at arms in the centre with longbowmen on the flanks. A unit commanded by King Edward was held in reserve, but his son, the Prince of Wales, led the soldiers on the right. The French army, commanded by King Philip, consisted of around 25,000 men, with the majority being knights and heavy cavalry, and they were supported by about 6,000 Genoese crossbowmen. The infantry only played a minor part, and some only arrived on the battlefield midway through the battle. Fighting began when the Genoese crossbowmen began firing at the English lines, but they had taken position too far away and missed their target. The English archers, armed with longbows, launched their own volley of arrows. The English longbows had a greater range and were quicker to reload. The English also began to fire their cannons. The Genoese archers, who were without their shields, were being slaughtered by the continuous wave of English arrows and with losses mounting, many began to retreat. The French knights, furious at seeing the Genoese fleeing, immediately began their attack deliberately riding straight into the retreating crossbowmen. The English arrows continued to fall on the approaching knights, killing both horses and riders. The heavy losses caused confusion and disrupted their advance. Very few French reached the English front line, but those that did came under attack both from the longbowmen and the men at arms. The survivors of the first wave regrouped and charged the gate, but as previously, English arrows targeted the French, inflicting big losses and preventing them from advancing to the English line. The unit, led by the Prince of Wales on the right, is where the majority of hand-to-hand -hand combat took place, but despite fierce fighting, the French were unable to inflict any major losses to the English. With further reinforcements arriving on the battlefield, the French continued to regroup and charge, but always with the same result. The French repeated this tactic unsuccessfully at least 15 times, and the fighting only stopped when it became too dark to see. At the end of the battle, the English had lost around 100 soldiers, but the French had suffered losses of about 4,000, including over 1,000 knights and noblemen, such as the King of Bohemia, the Duke of Lorraine, and even the brother of King Philip. This was a victory for the English. King Edward and his army would proceed to take the French port of Calais. This battle highlighted the importance of archers, a tactic the English repeated many times during the war.